New year, new me. Welcome back to the Skill Builders Guild. Thanks again for watching. It's episode 74 of What's on the Bench Weekly. familiar with this show it's where I take you through projects that I'm working on this year no Lexan projects at all ever <laughs> man I don't know how long that's gonna go but hopefully longer than four but here we are it's uh, 2024 now welcome I uh, hope you had an enjoyable holiday season and uh, right back on the bench and uh, what better thing to start with than this thing it's uh, I don't know what to call this yet uh, but this is a Scale Metal Supplies Rockalope chassis. And this was designed for the Element Enduro series. Uh, you can do a lot of things with these Element chassis, and uh, this is certainly one of them. I went ahead and added the Proline Beams uh, dual I-beam setup uh, front end to this. Uh, and as you can see, it's doing I-beam things as it's supposed to. I managed to get full steering lock. Well, not that way yet, because I had to trim something off there, but full steering lock, as you can see, and um, it wasn't really designed to work with this chassis, but I managed to get it to fit. Uh, the instructions on this were not great. Proline's definitely done better things in the past, uh, but in terms of the actual mechanics of this system, it works very well, provided you are using an SCX-10 2 or 1 skid because uh, that's really where the links mount and where they mount best. Uh, as you can see, that's what I'm running here, SCX-10-2 chassis skid. Um, but the plan, because this wouldn't be the Scale Builders Guild if I wasn't doing something dumb, is to take a VFD transmission and cram that in there somehow. Um, obviously it doesn't fit right now because there is no way to securely mount a VFD to an SCX-10 skid. Uh, there is one available on Shapeways, but I'm going the easy route. That was easy. By making Josh design one for me. Uh, he should have that ready in the next couple of days, and then I'll plop that VFD in, most likely with the stubby kit. Uh, so we uh, will have to do some sort of fast outrunner motor in order to make this all work. Uh, but that's sort of where the plan stays for now. What we've got here is the Zool trailing arm setup with the sway bar as well. Um, and all of that's mounted up to a TRX-4 axle. Yes, uh, portal-less. It's been portal deleted thanks to SSD's kit. And uh, we've still got the cable here for being able to shift that unlockable diff on the fly. Um, these obviously, these, these kinds of, I don't know, what are you, trophy trucks, I guess you could call this. Uh, lots of rear suspension, lots of front suspension. Uh, we're going to have more weight over the back by putting the battery up here um, from the beams kit. Uh, but I want to have an unlocked rear diff just to give it a bit more control. At least I hope that's what's going to happen. Obviously, there is no drive to the front wheels. That's uh, fully just independent um, freewheeling action. Uh, so yeah, this is sort of where this sits right now. You may also notice the Longju um, bypass shocks. Uh, I'm literally just putting those on for show. I'm not actually going to run them as a shock at all. Uh, we're just gonna keep them dry and use the actual included element shocks for actual shock duty. Duty. Uh, but yeah, there you go. That's sort of where this project is. Actually, there's more to it than that. Uh, this is the Falcon Wild Peak and uh, Roost setup that I stole off the Porsche back there. Uh, but it won't be running a Porsche body. Um, I started printing out this Ford F-150 Ranger XLT. I think it's like a 1980 model, so it's uh, Bullnose, I think. Um, Richard told me that. I, I don't honestly know a lot about these old square pickup trucks, but you'll notice that this body is comically large. Um, it is 10th scale, but it's not. It's way bigger than that. The wheelbase is something very comical and actually looks kind of hilarious on there because it's so big. I don't 
I don't think this is going to work. I think it's too much body. Um, I mean, I can make it work, but it just seems like there's not enough rear overhang. Like, it just kind of looks a bit silly. I wanted it to tuck. It definitely tucks, but it just seems like it's it's too much. It just seems too big. <laughs> just look. I think I blew it. <laughs> uh, so I'll obviously I'll finish printing the rest of the cab parts and then maybe we'll give this one away because it's, I think it's too big. I, I don't know, you tell me. Put a comment down below. Let me know if you think this body is too big for this truck wheelbase. I think it is. I'm sure you're going to agree with me. And if you like seeing me make mistakes, do all the things. All right, on to the next thing. No Lexan yet. Speaking of no Lexan, here's more no Lexan. Uh, this is the Hilux cab that I've been working on for my mullet chassis. However, I've decided to go a different route uh, with the mullet chassis. I don't think I'm going to be using this body on the mullet because <laughs> now it's got a full interior bay. Yes, full interior and inner fender structure uh, that makes it quite scale accurate. Uh, which I'm really quite pleased about. This whole thing, uh, again, is 3D printed, but printed in ABS. So this is basically styrene plastic, which is exactly what this body is made out of. So it all uses the same bonding agent, which is really great. And it is much easier to sand and much easier to work with. And you can add all kinds of extra styrene bits to it to make it more styrene-ish. More like scratch building with help <laughs> uh, but yeah i'm really super excited about all of these parts uh, i think i found these files on thingiverse i'll i'll track down where i found those files and i will put them in the link down below uh, so you can download them and print them yourself as well also printed a chevy love uh, front grille for this truck which i just think is so funny don't you love comedy don't you think comedy is funny Hit the comedy button. All right, so that's uh, where this is at. But I don't really know what I'm gonna do with this yet. My, I think, and I'm not, I think I'm gonna put this on a VS410. Uh, I have a pro chassis upstairs uh, that hasn't been built yet, and uh, it could use a hard body. I think I'd like to do that. So maybe I'll do that, I, I don't know. I haven't cut any of the fenders yet or anything. I've kept it pretty, pretty chill on this one so far. Um, of course, I ruined the, the tailgate for the mullet, so that's going to stay on there. But we're going to do something else on the front, and I think it's going to be something Toyota-related as well. If you have any ideas about what I might be putting there, put a comment down below. So that's where that's at. I'm really happy to be able to print in ABS. Uh, the Bamboo Labs X1 Carbon is a fantastic 3D printer, one I cannot recommend more. Uh, printing in ABS is so easy and so efficient, and it turns out so good. Like, it's like, it's so good. I can't get over it. It's really, really, honestly, it's, it's a printer that's changed the hobby for me. And made it even more good. G more gooder. <laughs> okay, on to the next thing. A week or two ago on Instagram, I put out a request asking if anybody had seen a shipping container that was like used to transport someone's drift car around rc of course it's sort of like a carrying case but it looks like a shipping container didn't get a lot of leads until a couple of days ago where i found it on the super g drift facebook page thanks to one of the instagram followers that i have very much appreciated thank you uh and uh i got some ideas to build my own version of that now of course this is not all of it this is just the starting phase but here's the door um, I found a really nice uh, 124th scale shipping container uh, file on Thingiverse again, uh, and I decided to scale it up and make it the size that I needed it to be. So this is just the beginning, but uh, I am having True North RC take a look at building the actual box for me out of laser cut wood. Uh, it's just going to be a much simpler process if he builds the box and I just tart it up with some shipping container bits like this door. And of course, it's not going to open that way. That would be silly. It would look cool, but um, it's going to open much more in like a hinged kind of box kind of way. 
but yeah, I'm just sort of trying to take an idea and make it. But I'm not good at carpentry at all. Putting that sign together took me forever. <laughs> and there's just a wood frame on the back of it. I don't have a chop saw with angles. So I had to measure things. And we all know how my math skills are. Not good. Anyway, uh, this is another fun project that I think uh, has a lot of potential. I can't wait to obviously model this up and detail it and weather it and add paint. And it's going to be a very fun process. So uh, that's going to be a long-term project, but hopefully uh, not as long as some of the other things I've done. That'll be a long-term project, but uh, very much looking forward to sharing more progress on that as it develops. Okay, on to the next thing. What else have we got here? Oh, earlier, <laughs> on December 31st, before it got into Lexan territory, or not working with Lexan territory, I did lower the uh, Jeep CJ from Axial. Uh, you can see it sits much nicer now. Uh, this is sitting on, what are those, Proline uh, Big Bore Scalar Shocks. And uh, those are the 90 to 95 mil ones. Perfect fit for me. Uh, you will obviously get a tiny bit more, maybe, well, maybe not actually. I don't think it'll actually rub at full lock and at full, uh, full compression because that sits quite compressed. I think it looks a lot better that way, but uh, can't make any more changes to that unless we change that. And I'm not doing that. Lastly today for what's on the bench, this box <laughs> from Killer Body. This is the Mercury 110th high simulated remote control car chassis built for the Jeep Gladiator body that they did. Hard body, I might add. No Lexan here, sir. Uh, but yes, uh, this comes pre-assembled axles and gearbox. The rest of the assembly is up to you. The proper suspension setup for the Gladiator too. Uh, it doesn't have rear leaf springs. There are two options, this one and the one for the LC70. Obviously this one's for the Jeep. Inner fenders, it looks like there are inner fenders included as well, and wheels and tires. Uh, so this really is a nice full package for that body. I'm very excited to put this together, uh, but I think we'll do that on a live stream, maybe this Saturday morning uh, for all of my European friends who aren't in my time zone. So stick around for that. That's going to be a good one, I think. Um, I don't really do unboxings, and I'm not going to per se, uh, but as you can see, there's lots of great features here. Uh, <laughs> jaw type differential locks. I wonder if they're actually, oh yeah, it's a remote diff. That's pretty cool. Uh, four wheel drive, rear wheel drive shifting transmission, two speed transmission, uh, front suspension three link with uh, suspension coil springs. Uh, rear suspension is a four link with damper cylinders. Uh, there's room for a battery tank. <laughs> uh, yeah, so this looks like it's a pretty full package. Uh, very excited to put this together. I'll make sure to have all the electronics and everything, including the shocks built on the live stream. So I hope you'll stick around for that. Uh, did I mention wheels and tires? It includes wheels and tires. I don't know if that's an add-on or not, but there's some heavy weighted rims in there uh, and they do have that sort of Jeep Gladiator look. This is really great. I'm really super excited to put this together. Uh, so yeah, watch for that. That'll be coming very soon. And with that, I think that's going to do it for this episode of What's on the Bench. Thank you so much for watching, and of course, we'll see you again next week.